Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about a fun one, and that is physics. Every single game engine out there has a physics engine of some kind, uh, Godot, Unreal, Unity, they all have their own built-in physics engine, and plus we're going to talk about a number of different options that exist out there in this world, but we're going to talk about a relatively new one today. What you see in front of you, this is Jolt Physics. This was actually the physics system developed for, for um, Horizon Forbidden West, and let's go ahead and see some ragdolls falling in the world. So yeah, this has full ragdoll simulation. Uh, this is the example you can actually get. Let's let's throw some uh, curveballs into the world so you can see how things interact. This is what a physics simulation is all about. For doing things like ragdolls, collisions in the world, conveyor belts, uh, soft body physics, even water buoyancy. Let's go ahead and check that one out. So select test. By the way, I'll show you where you can get this guy yourself. So here, shapes. This here is a, um, a very simple demo. Let me just get up above it. All of these shapes are various different uh, weights and buoyancies. The blue mesh at the bottom represents water. Let me just go ahead. We'll unpause this simulation. And they fall into the water. There you see. And then now they're going to they're gonna bounce according to their physical properties here. Uh, so, yeah. So, you got water buoyancy rules here. Different things float and bob at different rates. You saw them. They crash down into the water, bounce back out of it. So, that is one of the things that's available here. We got some basic stuff here as well. Uh, so, here is a um, conveyor belt. So, you can control things like motors and how they interact in the world. Let's go ahead and see this guy in action right now. So, I'll go ahead and run it. So you can see all of these guys around the outside edge here, they are running on a conveyor belt. Here you can see a lever over top of uh, a wheel there. Here they go, they drop off, they fall onto another conveyor belt and off they go. So you got all these systems for driving these really complex simulations. By the way, once again, you can uh, start tossing balls into the world to, to interact with things. Uh, you can come up to the menu over here and change uh, how those balls will go. So shoot object here and I can Greatly increase the uh, the volume here. I can change the restitution of said bounce. And let's go back. Now, it doesn't seem to like having those change on the fly. So let's boom, 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 boom. So you can interact with anything in the world, by the way, using these really annoying balls. Uh, so you got a variety of different tests to illustrate what this guy's capable of. It's also got the capability of doing uh, character controllers. Let's show that next. So uh, character right here. Uh, we do a character controller in the world, like so. Flip this guy out. So this would be how uh, it's arrow keys to drive this. So let me make sure that. Oh, so wake it up. So now I can use arrow keys to walk around the world. And here is how your character would interact with various systems in the world, like so. And again, we've got this is on a lever. So there's the a teeter totter going on here. You see, as you go over to the one side, it teeters over that way. Uh, yeah. So. It's, uh, by the way, you, you can jump using, oh, no, you can't jump. I thought you could jump. Uh, then we see interaction with the systems, like here, drop things through, and let's just push this off the game world. Oh, you go. So you got character controllers. Oops, I fell off the game world myself. Full character controllers are implemented there as well. You've also got things like vehicle controllers here. So let's go ahead and check out this tank one and navigate out. So here we've got a controllable tank in the world. Let's unfreeze this simulation and drive this guy around. And there we go. And let's go through some debris behind us. And okay, I'm not very good at driving tanks, apparently. So let's let's go through all the debris. There we go. And then we've got this. So it's got the climb up the road, the various different features of uh, controlling a tank in the simulation. We also had, again, a car controller there as well. Um, you got constraints, various things like hinges and gears. So here is a simple gear in action. Let's unpause that. Again, about as simple of a simulation as you can get. One gear driving another gear. Then you use all these basic physical building blocks to build your simulation. And then you hook it up to the graphical side of your game. The, the engine says, here's how something should move in your world. Uh, it's called you know, a certain number of times, 30 times or 60 times per, um, per rendering frame. And then you draw the graphics to, to match with what's updated in the physics world. That's basically how a physics engine works. If you want to get a hold of this guy, uh, it is an open source project. Uh, it is C++. So you use CMake to build the, the project for you. What you're going to want to do is probably start off here with the Hello World example. And this basically shows you everything you need to set up a physics simulation. So if you want to embed this in your own application or game engine, this Hello World sample, uh, we're going to get to the entry point right here in a second. Yeah, I'm in it right now, I think. So 
Uh, once you're in here, here's the main entry point. It's 99% comments, to be honest, but this sets up, creates simulation, adds various bodies, has them uh, interact with each other in a loop, and then it terminates it. There's literally no graphics involved in this. It just shows you kind of the bare basic skeleton of setting up uh, a jolt physics simulation. There's not really a lot to it. What you're going to probably want to do is jump in here to the samples, just come in here, set that as your active project, build it, and then that is what we saw earlier on, the various different samples that were available, and then you can jump into them. So if you want to learn about, say, soft body physics here, come into the soft body example, and you will see all the various different code that required to run that particular example. Uh, so this is probably where you want to jump in from a learning perspective. Now, by no means is Jolt the only option out there when it comes to physics engine. As I mentioned earlier on, Unity, Unreal, and Godot all have their own built-in physics. A lot of them also have implementations of some of the physics engines we're about to talk about in just a second. One of the most common ones out there is NVIDIA's PhysX. Uh, this is pretty much free and open source now. It used to be a full commercial project. It does have things like constructive physics uh cloth simulation, uh, fluid simulations, and so on. Uh, we also have Havoc Physics. It's probably the most uh, AAA physics engine out there. The weird thing is, in 2015, uh, Microsoft bought it, and it's been really weird to get your hands on it since. So I, I never really understood why Microsoft bought bought Havoc, uh, you can still get a hold of it, but you actually have to contact them and then they'll get back to you if they think you're worthy. I, I don't really get what's going on there. It's definitely harder to get a hold of Havoc than it used to be, although there are Havoc implementations for both uh, Unity and uh, Unreal Engine out there. Uh, on top of that, on the open source side of things, one of the most popular ones is Bullet, although ironically enough, the guy that developed Bullet actually works for NVIDIA now, which is interesting. Uh, this is a very popular open source implementation of physics. It's, there's bindings for Bullet for most game engines out there as well. And then another one we've got is the ODE. Now, ODE, or the Open Dynamic Engine, you don't hear about it as much. Uh, it's a very high-fidelity physics engine that's also open source. Um, but this one was used by uh, Assetto Corsa, the racing game, World of Goo, and a few others out there as well. So it's definitely a battle-tested physics engine option. And then we go into the world of 3D. You have options such as Box 2D Physics Engine, one of the most popular 2D physics systems out there, and then Chipmunk 2D as well. And there, there's a bunch of other ones as well. I just think I covered the most popular options out there. And to that list now, we can add Jolt Physics. Now, again, this started as kind of a private project and ended up being used in as the physics engine in uh, Horizon Forbidden West uh, is available on GitHub under the MIT license, which is uh, very, very cool. It is on a variety of different platforms as well. Uh, you can see a uh, talk that he did in 2022 about implementing it into uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, the design considerations are all here. Key things about it, uh, you know, like not running the simulation when they don't need to be, optimization, things like that, working on multiple cores and so on. Uh, features of Jolt include, again, a variety of collision shapes, boxes, spheres, capsules, uh, cylinders, convex hulls, uh, train maps, uh, height fields, uh, meshes, and so on. It simulates a number of different things, pulleys, cones, hinges, points, distances, smooth spine paths, uh, and so on. So a lot of different simulations in there. We saw that. We saw the gears and like the, the factory conveyor belt kind of set up earlier on. That would be the motors that are driving those constraints. You have a variety of different collision detection methods from casting rays, shape versus shape, uh, shape uh, casting a shape versus another shape, uh, broad phase only test for quickly determining which objects may intersect. You've got sensors, uh, you've got ragdolls in there, uh, you've got ga uh, game character simulations, vehicle simulations for tracked, wheeled, and motorcycles, soft body simulations for things like cloth or a deflated ball or whatever, and of course, water buoyancy that which we saw earlier on, and there is an optional double precision mode if you're using it for like universe scale games. So if you're doing, uh, I, I do believe, yeah, was double precision was just added to Unreal Engine 5.3. I think it was, might've been 5.2, but if you're creating a game like No Man's Sky, for example, it's got precision up to that level as well. Uh, it works on Windows, Linux, Android, Platform Blue, which is a code name for a, a game platform. You can probably guess which ones based off the fact that this is for uh, a PlayStation exclusive game. Uh, 
but you do still need to have the uh, developer kit to have access to that, by the way. Mac OS, iOS, and web, actually, as well, using a, a separate project there. So it has really good support, uh, works on a variety of different architectures there. Uh, the details about compiling it and the, the structure are available as well. There are language bindings for a couple of different languages, including two sets of C bindings, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, and the Zig language. And they have integrations. For example, you can see it was used, there is a Godot Jolt drop-in uh, system. Uh, we'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, Horizon for Ribbon West obviously used this guy. Uh, Neo Axis Engine implements it. The game X4 implements it and so on. Uh, the Godot implementation is a literal drop in. It's a GD extension to drop in uh, for replacing. So it basically... Um, you use it just like you would use existing rigid body 3D and character body 3D. I think I'm going to do a video about Jolt for Godot at some point in the future. Uh, it does use GD extensions though, so that means it's Godot 4 and beyond only, but also means it's pretty easy to get set up and working with. So if you're interested in uh, specifically uh, Jolt for Godot video in the future, do let me know and I will do my best. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Jolt Physics, uh, kind of a project that came sort of out of nowhere, completely free, MIT licensed, and now battle tested, uh, you know, in a game on a console integrated into uh, some game engines. Obviously, it's going to be integrated into more and more as we go forward. It's funny enough, there was just a release of the source code for the War Thunder Dagger engine, and it has a Jolt physics integration in it as well. So uh, Jolt does seem to be uh, going places for sure. It, there's a lot of momentum behind it. Okay, I'm done with the puns. Uh, but yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, is Jolt physics. If you want to check it out, there again are bindings for multiple different languages. It works on multiple different platforms, and it's pretty easy to get up and going. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.